And welcome back. Uh, we were going to run one more Surface ad because I heard that we might get some sales in the chat room if we did. But JR said we wouldn't, we'd run out of time if we did that. So we're not going to. But we're going to take some time now uh, to talk about testing uh, for Windows Phone apps. Now, obviously, every app should be tested. I know I'm, I'm guilty of this. A lot of times I don't test my apps as thoroughly as I should. Um, but it is a very, very important part uh, of your design process, right? Now, every app is unique. So obviously, each test plan is going to be unique. But you should basically, when you're building out your app and you're building that plan, create a good test plan that factors in all of the cool um, or all the important parts, the, the very um, business logic parts of your app, right? Um, because unit testing uh, in Visual U Studio, um, actually I should mention that unit testing has been available in uh, Vis Visual Studio 2012 since update two. Um, and since update two, it's also supported Windows Phone projects. So this is gonna let us test, um, do unit testing on our individual methods inside of our app. So um, I'm gonna show you a little bit today. We're gonna walk through, first thing we're gonna start off is unit testing. Uh, we'll walk through, we'll do some quality, uh, some looking at how we can deal with quality. And at the end, if we have enough time, we'll do some, uh, a quick Q&A. Okay, so uh, we can use um, unit testing for both managed and native code. Um, the more testing we get in there, um, the less time it'll actually take um, when we make changes. So um, think about that you've got this math of, massive app, right? All this crazy business logic in the back end, and it's just everything's solid. You come in, you make one little change, and bam, everything's broken, right? That's a horrible feeling. It's really hard if you don't have unit testing to actually get back in there and figure out what broke what, right? So that's where this, this concept of unit testing comes in. You test out all the methods, you know when they fail, and if you make that slight change and something you know, uh, ends up breaking something else, you're gonna see it right off the bat before you, know, you get into the submission process or, or pass off the, you know, the beta for your, your testers to try. Um, another really cool thing uh, that I found to be completely awesome is the fact that you can actually uh, run the tests manually on the team foundation server when you check in. So no more broken code being submitted, which is great, right? You're not gonna be the guy that breaks the repository. <laughs> so that's one really cool thing. So I'm gonna go into it. I'm gonna show you, um, you know, what we can do. We can, we're, we'll talk about, we'll take a look at the uh, test explorer and what's available in there. Uh, we'll see how it, you know, how it um, shows the grouping uh, for test results uh, through outcome, test duration, uh, project. Um, it also supports things like uh, searchable uh, terms inside of uh, your tests, which comes in really, really handy. Um, it's also a way of filtering through your uh, list of tests. So if you've got a lot of tests and you only want to see certain tests on, say, uh, you know, certain things, you can actually go ahead and filter it out. Um, unit testing um, with Visual Studio also allows us to do it via the command prompt. So we can execute our, our tests via the vtest.console app. Um, this app allows us to actually integrate the, the build pro, um, or integrate our testing into our build process. Um, so that's really, really a plus, especially if you have really, really big pro, uh, projects that you have this huge build process. You can actually incorporate the unit testing uh, via the, the console um, that way. Um, there's a configuration file that we'll actually take a look at. Um, it's, uh, it ends with uh, .run settings. Uh, and this is basically a configuration file. Um, it's XML based and has some definitions in there, uh, um, you know, selecting the target emulator that we want to use, uh, as well as it tells it where to uh, save the ta target file um, when we're done, like where we want to save it in our file system. So we'll take a look at that as well. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at the code and we'll start looking at unit testing. So the first thing I wanna do here is I'm gonna run my app. So this is my app. It's gonna take a second to load. So just a basic app, um, it's going to um, take uh, 12 cents off. And as soon as I click it, um, we got 123, I click it again, we're going up. Well, that's not a debt, that's actually adding. So there's something wrong with our app. So let's dig in and figure out where this went wrong. 
And luckily, we've included unit testing inside of our app, so this process will be a lot easier. So we're going to go into our, um, our sample uh, unit test app down here at the bottom, and we're going to open up our unit test uh, 1.cs file. And this is our test class. So basically, um, this is going to say with a valid amount, um, our beginning balance is going to be uh, 1199. We're going to um, remove 450, uh, 4.55 off that, and we expect to have 7.44 return. So that's our test, right? That's with a, with a valid amount. With an invalid amount, um, we have our test here. Let's remove that breakpoint. We have our uh, test here saying our beginning balance is 1199. Um, We're going to remove four and we should see it come out to 7.44. So those are our tests. So if we go in, I'm going to actually open my test menu here, and we go down to run, and I'm going to select all tests. So I'm actually running right now, I'm running all the tests. So um, if our view didn't pop open here, we can go to test, and then uh, windows, oh, oh, popped up. Took a little bit longer to run than I thought it might. So I'll just pin that so we don't lose it. Bring this over. So we failed two tests. We failed our uh, debt without or with an uh, invalid amount and we failed our debt with a valid amount. So we know right off the bat that we have an issue somewhere with our logic. So let's take a look at our code and figure out where we're making that mistake. So if I go into my, um, into my app, and I go into my model, and I select my customer model, and I scroll down to where the debt is being, uh, the debt function is, so this is the function that's being run and the function that's being tested, you'll notice down here at the ba bottom I have balance plus equals amount. Well, that's our problem. We're adding. We're not subtracting. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to change that so it minus uh, equals amount. So now our balance is actually going to have um, it subtracted as opposed to added to. So we go ahead and save that. And if we go ahead and we run our tests again, so I'll go up here, I'm going to click run all tests. And over here it's running our tests. Well now we passed with a valid amount but we're still failing with an invalid amount. So we fixed one problem, but we're still having an issue with our invalid amount. So to track this down a little bit more, um, let's take a look at our test code. So we'll go back to our test code, our unit test here, and we'll scroll down to the debt with invalid amount. And um, just to make it fun, so we can figure out what's going on, let's go ahead and set a breakpoint at uh, where we're actually setting the uh, customer balance. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and run this again. So we'll run our app here. Click debt. Oh, I didn't fire it off. I clicked the wrong one. Sorry about that. So we're going to select our unit um, test, so our debt debt without, uh, with invalid amount, and we're going to debug this selected test. So instead of what I did before, I actually debugged the entire app. What I meant to do was actually debug the selected te um, test. So I went over here, I've selected it, I right click it, and I'm going to select debug selected tests. So now it's going to run through, it's going to fire up the app, and it's going to run our tests. After a, a moment or two, we'll get our app deployed and running. Now, our debuggers hit our breakpoint. So if I hover over um, our customer balance, I'll see that I have uh, 7.99. Um, and if I hover over my expected, I've got 7.44. Well, there's the, the issue. 
um, our calculations are wrong. So if I scroll up to the top here, well, obviously that doesn't make sense. If I take 4 away from 1199, I'm not left with 744, I'm left with 799. So our test has a little bit of a bug in it. So let's go ahead and change the values. So if I stop our code from running there. And I change the value, so it says 799. Um, and now I rerun the test. So I'll just remove the breakpoint. And I'm going to rerun my tests. Now we pass. So as you can see, like, you know, with a couple of little steps, obviously you got to watch out for little bugs like that. But there, you, know, you can step through it, you can throw uh, breakpoints in there, step through, debug each test. And you know, in a few minutes, we found the errors. And now if we launch our app again, everything should be working the way we expect. So I have 123, I remove 12. Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to make sense. And there you have it. That's a quick and simple um, unit test um, uh, demonstration. So very cool. So we'll stop that and we'll jump back over to our presentation. Actually, you know what, before I do that, let me show you, like I mentioned before, um, we can actually run these from a command line. So I'm going to just jump through here and see if I can get to my folder where I'm keeping all this. And um, if we go in, you'll remember I said that there was a XML file where we can actually set um, the uh, variables for our test, like what emulator we want it to run on, where we want it to actually spit out. If you look over here in my solution items, I have sample test uh, dot run settings. This is the actual file um, where those variables are stored. So right here we have it set for our target devices, uh, our emulator, our 720p emulator. And we're telling it to put the, the results uh, in a folder called test results. So very cool. So um, if I run, now I could just go into the command line and you know do all that, but I'm just going to take a shortcut. I'm actually going to run the, uh, the batch file directly here. So if I run this here, you'll notice it fires up an emulator. A little big there, I'll shrink it down for you. It actually fires up the emulator and it's going to run through our tests. So if we sit here and we just give it a few seconds, it's going to go through and execute all of our tests. I feel like we should have some hold music in the background while I do this. You know, a little bit of elevator music, a little Copacabana. Yeah. All right, so there we go. It was really fast there. I don't know if you actually caught it. it. It went really quick. But it ran through all of them. It checked our tests. And then it actually spit out the results right here. So if I go ahead um, and I click it, we'll click the, the one that we ran just there. And it'll show our test results down here at the bottom. I'll just bring that up so we can see it a little bit better. And it says we passed all of our tests. Very cool. So there you go. That's a way you can run it not only inside the uh, Visual Studio um, editor, but you can also run it outside uh, via command, uh, command line. Um, so you can you know, hook it into your build uh, functions and stuff like that. So very cool. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to our presentation here. So obviously, quality is a, an important factor um, for the success of your app. Um, if your app's got a bunch of crashes or bugs in it, it's going to affect the reviews, right? So, and actually that'll really happen fast. Um, you know, so make sure you're staying on top of this, that you test every time you push um, to make sure that you don't have these issues. Um, and not only test it on the emulator, um, but test it on a device. Uh, the Windows Phone emulator does decent work um, when it comes to actually emulating the phone hardware, but it's not perfect, right? Um, like I mentioned before, it, it's, the emulator is running on more powerful hardware. It's running on an Alienware right now, right? That's a little bit more power than your, uh, your phone device might have. Um, as well as other things like um, inputs from uh, sensors. Um, there, it's not ideal when you're using the, uh, the phone uh, emulator because that's actually uh, clean input. Um, and if you're running it like uh, with the real sensors, you know you, you might have things like environmental influences that can actually change the outcome of the sensor, right? So my best advice when it comes to testing is don't just test it in the emulator. Get it onto a real device. Test it and see how it feels on the real device. 
Uh, and not just on one device, I recommend you test it on a bunch of different devices, right? Go for the lower end ones, go for the higher end ones. Uh, make sure you're, you're doing your best to, to hit the full spectrum of hardware that's available to your users. Um, uh, also, with the Windows Phone SDK that uh, you install when you're building for Windows Phone, it comes with a store test kit. Um, and this basically does a bunch of uh, manual and automated tests to ensure that the app's going to pass certification requirements. Um, as well as make sure that you've got everything packed up, like your, your pictures, um, your icons are the right dimensions, um, the right um, resolutions, uh, your screenshots um, are the right uh, dimensions and resolutions, um, as well as it'll, it'll uh, test for more in-depth things like uh, the boot up time and stuff like that. So definitely uh, run the store test um, before you do your final submission. It'll save you time, you know, that way you're not, you don't just submit it to the store and you have like something very small, like a, a bad scaled icon and it gets kicked back from the store. Um, you know, testing apps become kind of routine um, to us after you've done it for a long time. So sit down, create a test plan, um, think about the features that are included in your, in your app um, and what um, the most relevant parts of your app and then and then walk through those. Use your app as if you were uh, your actual user, right? Um, try it on different screen resolutions. Rotate the phone around. Uh, press the back, go back into it, right? Um, put it into, uh, into um, background mode and take it back out. Do everything that you can possibly think of. Um, one thing that actually uh, caught one of my apps was, and I didn't even think of this, is the fact that um, a lot of users will put, go into uh, airplane mode when they're using your app. So I had an app that was uh, making calls out to the internet, um, and I, I did a check to make sure that there was internet access, but I never checked to see if it was in um, airplane mode. And what was happening was, was um, I had a little bit of code in there that was actually causing a crash every time somebody went into airplane mode. And I submitted it to the store, and the store actually sent that back and said, hey, you, you need to take a look at uh, what happens with your app when you actually get into, um, uh, into airplane mode. So, you know, basically sit down, think of the general uses that you're going to um, gonna need for your phone, and then build the test plan around that. And like I said, make sure you do uh, as much as you can think of to test your, test your app. And this goes to the, to the next slide, the real world testing, right? Um, get it in the hands of, of some friends. Um, you know, because we build the apps, we kind of know how and expect how they're gonna react. Um, but if you put it into the, the hands of someone else um, that's never seen the app before, it's a really good experience. Like Things like the buttons aren't being in the right place, or they're not using a, a certain function the way you expected to, or they start to use things um, completely out of the box and, and in a way that you never expected them to. So you can kind of see um, wh what your end uh, user is going to be doing with your app. Right, um, things like something little like the sound levels. Make sure the sound levels is in con is consistent across your app. Right, so from one page to the next, you shouldn't have like your audio level rising and then dropping and then rising and then dropping. Right, um, look to things like you know um, you got fancy animations in there. Um, make sure that they look the same on each device. Right, um, do you have device theme support? Does that work on every device? These are little things that you got to think of. It's a lot when you sit down and, and, you, and you kind of like think like how all the little ways that someone can use your app. But in the end, if you find the bug before someone else does, it's going to save you in the review process big time. Um, another good thing to think about um, is the beta system um, that's available uh, with the Windows Store. So you can submit your app um, uh, via beta. Uh, beta. Um, and then what happens is you can actually distribute it to a bunch of testers. Right, so you submit to the store. It goes through a certification process, but it's not really the same certification process if it was going into the store. Um, basically, they're just going to make sure that it runs. Uh, they're going to sign it, and then they're going to allow you to push it to a bunch of um, your testers. Um, the only thing that your testers need, or that you need from your testers, is their live ID, so you can actually put their live ID in, and then you can actually go ahead and submit it to them. Um, you want to make sure that you include some sort of feedback uh, mechanism within the app. So um, one thing that I, I, I refuse to do is actually uh, push an app without any sort of analytics in there. Um, so this is a good way to see what your app, uh, how long your users are using your app, where they're using your app from. It, it's, just, it's a really good way of getting feedback to yourself. Um, another good way of doing that is a uh, rate and review process. So you might want to ask for feedback directly from the users. 
Now, obviously, the store has a, a feedback system built into it um, that allows users to give feedback. But for the most part, a lot of them won't give you general feedback. They'll just like do like a one line like "I love the app" or "This sucks," <laughs> right? Um, you know, or they'll give you just a basic star. Um, uh, rating. So if you're looking for a little bit more feedback or you want a little bit extra from them, um, maybe you want to include your own um, rate and review system. Uh, maybe in the beta, you actually, every time the user goes to either, you know, to a different page or, or they're using a different feature, uh, you might want to ask them, uh, how does this work? Did you like this? Right? Um, maybe you, you build a feedback form on a website or, a, or an email system. But you should definitely have some sort of feedback mechanism built into your to your app. It, it's it's a great um, a great way to know what your users are expecting um, and what they like and what they don't like. Um, so definitely uh, check that out. And of course, um, collect uh, telemetry info. Um, there's a lot of different tools out there. Um, you know, uh, Visual Studio uh, Online Telemetry SDK is a good one. Uh, you can use Google Analytics. You can use Flurry. There's a lot of different ones out there. So uh, take a look and see what one kind of fits your needs and uh, usage. Again, I talked a little bit about the beta submission. Um, beta apps are always free, um, so you can't charge for a beta app. Obviously, um, beta app uh, product in-app project. In-app uh, purchases are not charged, so you can set it up so that they can actually, you know, purchase the product uh, in the game. So maybe, or uh, in the app, maybe you have something that they purchase, and you can see it work, but it's not actually going to charge their credit card or their account. Um, beta apps uh, require the obviously they require um, your testers to have a live ID. So what you'll do is you'll collect the live IDs from your users and uh, set it up that way. Um, but yeah, I definitely suggest trying uh, a beta period for your app, um, especially if it's a really complica uh, complicated app. It's a good way to see you know, if there's any hiccups in the system, as well as, like I said, you'll get the feedback. Maybe somebody just doesn't like the color of a button, right? You're going to get that before it's into the end of the store, and then all of a sudden you get a really bad review because somebody didn't like the shape of a button, right? So I definitely suggest uh, trying a beta uh, period for your app. Okay, so I'm going to do one more demo um, before we wrap up. And in this demo, I'm going to show you um, some of the features of the Windows Phone emulator. So we'll go back over here to my code. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to fire this up. And we'll open our emulator here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the uh, little arrows button here to the right, and that's going to open up another panel. I'm just going to pull this over so we got some room here. And this is my accelerometer. So if I drag this around, you'll notice the values for uh, my raw accelerometer data on my app actually changes. So this is a good way to test out, um, you know, your uh, your accelerometer um, input for your app without having to actually put it onto a device. Um, it's pretty precise. Um, it, it's good for very basic tests, but again, once you get out to something a little bit more um, um, intense, you're probably going to want to push it to a, a device and actually test it. Uh, another really cool thing is you can actually set up um, recorded um, uh, like uh, fe features. So if I had somebody like if I wanted to see what it was like if someone shook the uh, the phone or tilted the phone, you can actually record that data and then play it back. So right here I have uh, shake as recorded data, and if I play that, you'll notice that my raw data changes as if someone was actually shaking the camera, which is pretty cool. Um, another one uh, that's really cool is the location data. So um, this allows me to kind of like spoof where I am, right? So right now it thinks I'm in Seattle, right? So if I um, go ahead and I click something like, um, if I click there, you'll notice right off the bat that my location data is changing. So right down here, I have my uh, my longitude and latitude. So I can add places and and basically act as if I was coming from that place, which is pretty cool, right? So you can test out, you know, um, if you had an app that was looking for certain things, like you know, if I'm in Seattle, find me the nearest Starbucks, which shouldn't be that hard. But um, you know, you can you can try it out. Maybe you want to try that out in Wisconsin, where there might not be as many Starbucks, right? So very, very cool. Um, of course, you've also got some other neat stuff, like you got the screenshots, so you can actually take uh, good screenshots that you're going to have to use for the store. 
Um, you can capture them and then save them there. As well as you can also do some stuff um, around the networking. Um, that's a little bit more complicated, so we'll leave that. Uh, if you want to dig into that, there's some great information on uh, the MDSDN website um, around that. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about the emulator itself. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I can show you around that. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think we're good. OK, so let's get back to our presentation. So uh, this brings us to our resources section. Um, obviously, there's a lot of good content out there uh, around everything that I've mentioned today. Um, if you're looking for information on testing apps for the Windows Phone 8, uh, check out the uh, website located here, uh, aka.ms slash wp8test. Um, and if you want some more information specifically around unit testing for Windows Phone, uh, there's some great content here on this MSDN website. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll open it up for some questions. Oh, Visual Studio Telemetry, yes. So Visual Studio Telemetry SDK is uh, what I was mentioning. It's an actual SDK that you can use inside of Visual Studio to do your telemetry. Um, it's uh, like, kind of like, uh, like the Google Analytics, but it's built more in for Visual Studio. Um, it really depends on the app. So the question there was, uh, how long do you spend testing your app? Um, for me, uh, it really, like I said, it really depends on the app. If I have something very complicated that uses like uh, GPS or um, accelerometer input, I'm going to test it a lot more thoroughly and on a lot more devices because of that. But if it's something very basic, you know, I'm, I'm going to probably spend on average about a week just testing the app um, completely done. You know, you do your feature freeze, you push out your your release candidate, and you test it and see what it looks like. That's basically my my strategy anyway for testing. Yeah, application. Uh, the question there was application insights. Yeah, application insights is a, is a good way to uh, see what your app's doing. I would definitely suggest if that if it fits if it fits the needs of your app um, to definitely go ahead and, and try and try using that. There's a lot of different choices out there. Like again, it just goes to basically what you need and, and what your comfort level is with, uh, with that product. OK, with that, we're going to take another break. Uh, and we'll come back and chat some more. I think we're going to be talking about monetization and, um, when we come back. Awesome. Well, thank you very much.